Since Juice Defender just had a large update, I'm going to re-review it to help you figure out how to use it. To start out, if you're wondering why you don't have all these tabs, it's because you haven't fully un uninstalled the old version. If you don't uninstall the old one first, it will not correctly reinstall the new one. So uninstall the old one and fresh download the new one and you should get everything like you see here. Okay, to start out, we are gonna start in statuses and work through the tabs as we go. Okay, it shows you you can have a quick link right here to controls, schedules, triggers, and apps. If you click on those, it's a quick link to the tabs over here. Now, when you start out, I would recommend Advanced right here because you can get the most customizable battery life. If you choose Aggressive Extreme or Default, it might enable settings you wish not to have enabled. I have a graphical notification, which is notifications right here. And it just shows what apps run in or if the screen's on, if it's using data. Help is really useful if you show it shows all this text right here. It explains what everything does. You have your activity log right here. When you go over to controls, you up here you want to make sure you enable mobile data. If you like using Wi-Fi a lot, make sure you hit prefer Wi-Fi. So later on, I'll explain how it knows where you are in a Wi-Fi hotspot, and it will use Wi-Fi instead of 3G to save you power. Since I rarely, if ever, use Wi-Fi, I just keep it disabled. You can enable it if you use Wi-Fi a lot. If, right here, if you use it every so often, but you don't want to worry about having to turn it off, it can automatically disable your Wi-Fi for you after a certain amount of time. I would keep this setting right here disabled. Later on is a better option. It's better to have... Most likely, if you have your screen on, you're going to be using data, or you're going to want your data on. So just uh, keep on watching, and I'm going to explain. It's going to keep your data on when your screen's on, and turn it off when your screen's off. That helps save a lot of battery life. These are just various other settings to mess around with to get better battery life, depending on your uses, usage habits. Same right here all these right here you can just read them they're really straightforward explanations and it, it's really easy right here is if you have a rooted phone and it will change your processor speed depending on what you're doing so if you're idle it will use a really low amount of power and right here you can change your speeds now when you go to schedule come all the way up if you periodically want something to sync in your background, like your email, Twitter, Facebook, something to pop up in the background, but you don't want your 3G on all the time to sync this, you should enable a schedule or just dis disable it if you never want your 3G on when the screen's off. Frequency, it will turn on th every 30 minutes. It will turn on for, a, I think it's about a couple minutes, and it turns on your data. Every 30 minutes is what I have it set at. So it will check for emails, status updates, the sorts like that. I actually have it set for 30 seconds. And you can go up to 1, 2 minutes, and 5 minutes. On controls, you can actually, if you have 4G or maybe Wi-Fi enabled, you can customize what ones you want to turn off and on. Like You can even make Wi-Fi turn off the screen and turn back on. The screen comes back on. If you like keeping your phone on at night, I turn mine off. It's just a habit now. You can enable this and it would turn your 3G off at night. So it uses less power every night as well. You could customize what time and so forth. You could also even put it in airplane mode automatically if you don't like receiving phone calls at night or text messages. And you have your peak hours as well to make sure it stays on and those 
out of various settings to customize when your data is on. Triggers is probably one of the more useful things to saving battery life. I've just kept this at normal. I found high right here keeps the data on too long. Normal is good because if I have an app downloaded in the background and my screen turns off, then the data turns off and the app gets disrupted. And if I leave normal on right here, it will keep on downloading in the background. And until the, when the app's done, the 3G will turn off. If you enable apps, you can actually enable, if you have like the marketplace, download an app, or you have Pandora playing, you can enable this and configure certain applications to, if they're, they are running, to keep the data enabled so it won't turn off. Like if you're running Pandora, you can listen to your music with your screen off. But if you quit Pandora, 3G will turn off again. All right here's what I was talking about before. If you enable this, it uses the cell phone towers to triangulate your position, which is accurate to a couple of kilometers, but they say it works. I haven't used it since I don't use Wi-Fi, but if you say go to work, you don't use your Wi-Fi at work, but you come home and you use your Wi-Fi, it will know that you are home, automatically turn on your Wi-Fi, and not use 3G, so you don't have to automate the process of turning on your Wi-Fi so you don't have to think about it when you come home. It says it might give a couple tries. So I'm, I'm assuming it works. Just have patience with it a couple tries. I have had, I have it disabled up here to, uh, if it, you can set it if it goes below one of these threshold levels, it would automatically just keep data no matter what disabled. Like, I guess if you, it's at 15%, your phone's about to die. So you might want to keep it disabled so you can make a phone call or a text message. But it's all up to you. I just keep it disabled. I have it on charger to keep it enabled if it's on USB or AC. So when it's charging, it's enabled all the time. And I have it for, like I was saying before, a screen. To when the screen's on, it keeps it enabled. And I have it, if you have it this, it won't turn on your G 3G until after you unlock your screen, but I like it sometimes takes up to like 5 seconds even for your 3G to turn back on. So if you have it turn on when your screen's at the lock screen and then you unlock it, that gives you like a couple second head start for it to turn on. So I don't have to wait as long for it to turn on. Because sometimes I want to turn on my phone, go straight to like a web browser, but I can't because I won't load a page without 3G takes a couple seconds for it to load. If you have any more questions, um, please post comments below. I hope this video helped and please subscribe.